I think we should get get started. All right, guys. So this uh, review will have um, some pictures uh, that I'd like you to basically diagnose and tell me uh, what it is. Morning, Rachel. Um, you know, I really thought about how to present a review material as high yield as I can for you guys uh, this morning. You know, I know an hour of your time is very, very precious. Uh, so I went over all my kind of old OCAP notes and kind of, you know, kind of really the high yield material, all the questions. So, um, so yeah, I'll ask you questions of kind of, you know, what the high yield material is kind of to focus you on, okay? Kind of what you need to know, um, but it'll be kind of random. All right, okay, so first first question, just keep track. So group one, what's the diagnosis? Some of the, so, you know, some of the pictures are not the best, um, uh, but that's not an excuse, okay? Right. What is it? Hyper. Nope. What's hypertensive? Nope. So this is a PVD. Okay. Not very good. That's a Weiss ring that you're seeing right there, floating around. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. Just to give you guys a, a sense of some of the pictures, not good. This is one of the worst ones, so it's okay. Um, so okay. So no points for that. So let's let's talk about kind of a PVD, okay? How it happens, PVD. So when the, there's a partial PVD, so there's liquefaction, and then there's a, um, a synergesis of the vitreous. Fluid can get underneath the macula, okay? The periphobia, and that's a partial detachment. What's the area around uh, an anatomically? What's the area around the uh, vitreous adhesion to the optic nerve? What is it called? Area of Martijani, okay? No. Nope points there again, okay. And then you have the vitreous connected anteriorly. Where is it connected to? What is it called? To the lens capsule, what is it called? Ligament of Wiegert or something, we something, okay. No points again. Um, and then what's the space between the anterior vitreous and the lens capsule? burger space, okay? These are, you know, you'll see these all in the OCAPs. These are like the minute uh, questions uh, that the OCAPs ask. And these are the questions I'll be asking you today, like the weird associations that they love. Um, so once the uh, PVD or the vitreous uh, de detaches from area of Martigiani, then that's complete uh, PVD, and that's what you see kind of the white ring, okay? PVD, and uh, I'm not gonna belabor the clinical findings of PVD. Um, and the differential diagnosis. Um, but um, some of the high yield topics are earlier onset is in myopia, diabetes, trauma, uveitis, and cataract surgery, okay? Um, and then the, the clinical points, that's usually not tested, uh, but clinically you should know that, okay? All right, this group, what is this? Great, choroidal rupture. Okay, so for those of you not sure where the choroidal rupture is, is that crescent right there around the optic nerve for trauma, that's usually where it's located, constructed to the optic nerve, okay? Um, things that you need to know, anteriorly, they're parallel to the ora serrata, okay? And then uh, the complication for choroidal ruptures are choroidal neovascularization that can happen, okay? What is this, this group? Okay, is this one, I think, I think that's uh, my, my answer would be, for this one, this is commotion, okay? Question for commotion is, uh, where's the damage? What's the mechanism? Photoreceptor, so outer retina, okay? So that's, uh, that's, uh, uh, that's the um, uh, uh, OCAP question for commotion, is that it's in the outer retina, okay? Very good. Next, next one, this group. What did you say? Tersens. Tersens, okay, that's one. It's not tersens. Pershers. Pershers, okay, very good. So some of the things that you need to know about OCAPs for Pershers syndrome. So what's the mechanism for Pershers? Like release of cytokines and crush injury. Yeah, complement, that's the, you know, the buzzword for, uh, for Pershers complement. So what are the things that can cause Pershers? 
pancreatitis is the big thing that you know they they always you know, kind of ask questions. But trauma to long bones, fat embolism, amniotic embolism, those are the ones that we cause for uh, perchers. Okay, so lots of cotton wool spots, those whitening that you can see, some pre retinal hemorrhage. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Uh, fat or amniotic fluid embolization, crushed injury to the chest, long bone fractures, and pancreatitis. This is the uh, the uh, uh, the case scenario that they'll be that you'll be given. Okay. Okay. This one. This one's a little bit hard, but let's say this is kind of a baby. This group. Looks like uh, like a shaken baby. Or Perfect. Non-accidental trauma. Okay. So you have those. Uh, um, uh, blood with a white uh, center. Um, uh, it, it, this doesn't typically come out of OCAP's uh, uh, NAT. So, okay, this one, this was a has history of trauma. What is this, this group? Well, you guys are looking at it. For those of you that just came in right now, so I, I went through all my notes last night and kind of looked at kind of the high yield questions that I've seen over the years for OCAPs and just going through it. Okay, what is this? History of trauma. It is traction. Okay. Let's say a gunshot wound. Like scleral rupture. So this is called scopeteria, okay. So the typical board's question, scopeteria, what's the mechanism of uh, scopeteria? High velocity impact. Shock waves, okay, so it's not direct impact. It's kind of the shock waves from something, okay? So that's scopeteria. Um, uh, high velocity, it's not really contusion, but it's shock waves, okay? Very good. This one, what is this? Perfect, that's what it is, a trocular foreign body. You try to rule out a globe. And, um, you know, we've all, I have some questions here that I thought, so um, sometimes when intraocular foreign bodies are inside uh, the eye, uh, sometimes it's never detected, right? And there's chronic findings. Um, if it's iron, you can have heterochromia, cataracts, Optic atrophy if it's copper chalcosis. One of the so uh, one of the questions for OCAPS is where is copper um, located in the eye, and what does it look like? Copper. Where is it? In the yeah, eye? yeah. What's a typical like? Where is copper? Membrane. Decimase. Okay, so that's that's the typical question in uh, OCAPS. Copper is in uh, uh, decimase. Um, and then iron, remember there's heterochromia, okay? Uh, the initial findings are, uh, you know, sometimes ERGs, and that's another typical question for ERGs, um, for iron, the ERGs are normal. And then you get, um, um, uh, I think, uh, lowering of B waves, okay? So iron, copper, Um, copper, what's the finding for uh, copper in cataracts? What is it called? Yeah, perfect, good. Yeah, so those are the questions. All right, what is this? Perfect, retinal detachment. What are the, uh, what are the predisposing things to uh, retinal detachment or what are the lesions not predisposing to retinal detachment? Okay, high myopia, cool. Lattice is predisposing to uh, retinal detachment. What else predisposes to retinal detachment? Sure. I'm thinking of anatomic things inside the eye that you would see that we say, you know, this is higher risk. How about vitreo retinal tuft? Is that predisposing to RD or not? Yes. Yes, good. How about like enclosed aura base, meridional folds? Yes, very good. Um, how about uh, cobblestone degeneration? No. No, perfect. How about reticular degeneration? Peripheral cystoid degeneration? No, okay, so those, those do come out, okay. Um, <clears throat> anything else about retinal detachments? Um, retinal detachments versus uh, retina schesis. Do you get an absolute scotoma or a relative scotoma in retinal detachment? 
relative scotoma, okay? So um, I think about it in retinoschisis, the layers are split, okay? And you, you don't have a connection between kind of the, the retina and that's why they have an absolute scotoma. Um, <clears throat> in retinal detachments, do the, does lasers burn it or, or is there whitening when you laser it versus retinoschisis? Yes, for retinoschisis, correct. There's a whitening when you have retinoschisis, okay? Um, very good. Retinal detachment. We've all known kind of the three different parts, regmatogenous, exudative, and tractional, okay? I'm not gonna go through that. Um, and they typically don't ask about kind of surgical approaches for retinal detachments. Um, very good. Okay. Okay. Speaking of which, what is this? Schesis. Schesis. Okay. Where is the schesis? Outer plexiform. So is this um, degenerative retina schesis or juvenile retina schesis? Degenerative. Okay. Because it's in the um, kind of in the outer um, nuclear layer. Uh, where is a juvenile retina schesis um, uh, split? Okay, yeah, I just think about it like RNFL for some reason. So, uh, ret uh, uh, like uh, retina schesis and their fibro layer the, for the juvenile retina schesis. Very good. And it's usually located inferotemporally. Um, let me just think. Oh, uh, for retinal, going back to retinal detachments, the other question is um, uh, where breaks can usually happen for trauma. When you get a trauma and you get a break, where do you usually see it? Infertemporal is number one, supernasal is the other one, okay? So um, I've always kind of remembered, it, it's not the best kind of uh, uh, remembrance, but uh, uh, so once once you have trauma, it all you know it, it, the globe expands equatorially, and it's just kind of a little bit um, not equator, but inferotemporal. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Um, no. <laughs> all right, so, uh, retina schesis split occurs between the inner nuclear and outer plexiform layer. Okay, so that's that's uh, that's important. Um, and oh, the other thing that comes out for OCAPS is its association with hyperopia. Okay, so that's the important one. You know, like these small things really does matter. Uh, so I remember because in retinal detachment, it's associated with myopia. In retina schesis, it's associated with hyperopia. And it's always confusing with these associations of hyperopia and, and myopia. So just remember hyperopia and retina schesis, okay? All right, next thing, this is another high yield one. Ooh, which group is next? Okay, that group. I would describe this, I mean, the buzzwords are kind of retinal folds or spoke-like things in the macula. Okay, this group. Come on, guys. Spoke-like. Yeah, this is juvenile retina schesis. Okay, this is another high-yield one. Okay, juvenile re retina schesis. Um, and... Let's see. This is one of the differential diagnoses for vitreous hemorrhage in a kid. Okay, juvenile retinous schesis. What are the other um, differential diagnoses for vitreous hemorrhage in a kid? What do you think about? Trauma. Trauma, good. Sure. The classic ones. ROP. Yeah. Not really. What do you guys think about for vitreous hemorrhage for a kid? RB is one, juvenile xanthogranuloma is another one, intermediate uveitis is another one, okay? So those are the things that should be kind of popping up in your head. Uh, but this is other, another one, juvenile retina schesis. Okay. Very good, very good. All right, what is this? Who is next? Is that 
that's it. lattice. Okay, very good lattice. So you know, for lattice, just so you know, when you when you see lattice, even kind of clinically, you have these you know like uh, hyper you know the RPE hyperpigmented, and you have uh, um, uh, atrophic uh, vessels, the white one crossing it. You know that's that's characteristic of of lattice degeneration, okay? So lattice, you guys talked about it already. This is a risk for retinal detachment, but the risk is low. That's why we don't prophylactically laser these, okay? Very good. Um, good. All right, this one. Cole, you said it? Very good, CRA. So cherry red spots, other cherry red spots are Tay-Sachs, Neiman, Pick. You know, Komosho can look like this, okay? Um, Typically, you have a cellular retinal artery. Uh, that's why you get, you know, the macula sparing. Speaking of, let, let's talk about the anatomy first, okay? Some high yield things, you know. What's the, um, how big is the macula? Dimensions. 5.5 millimeters, okay? So 5.5 is the whole macula. So how about the fovea? Less than that, right? 1.5 millimeter. So the fovea is the same as the optic nerve, basically, area. So optic nerve is about 1.5. So fovea is 1.5. How about the parafovea? 0.5 outside of the 1.5. Okay, it's a ring of kind of a 0.5 millimeter in that kind of radius. Um, and then outside of that, the perifovea? Yeah, parafovea and then perifovea. Yeah, around one. Yeah, good. Um, I think it's two actually. Okay, so, so <laughs> it doesn't equal five point five. That's what I remember when you when you. Um, so so, but that but you know, but those dimensions are important. Sometimes you get asked those and kind of where where that is, um, and then the foveola is kind of point three five. Okay, um, and uh, was there a question? Okay. So CRAO, um, a lot of things to think about. With, you know, uh, you know, for OCAPs, they don't actually ask a lot of uh, the uh, CRAOs, BRAOs, BRBOs. You know, this is one of the most common things we see in clinic, but they don't ask a lot of that. Um, they, you know, if it's a kid, you think about metabolic storage diseases. As I've said, Tay Sachs, Neiman Pick, <coughs> Sandhoff, and Hurlers. Um, uh, let's see. Very good. Yeah, the uh, cellular retinal artery, sometimes they ask about that. Okay, this one, what is this? Who's next? This could be a lot of things, right? So, but what is this? Valsalva retinopathy, yeah, this is a classic one. So, you know, for those of you who haven't seen this, this is kind of just the hyaloid kind of circling, and then you have it. So it's a pre-retinal hemorrhage trapped by hyaloid. So history of sneezing, coughing, um, anything, you know, lifting heavy stuff. Um, uh, very good. Good. Nothing else gets asked about that. This one, what is this? Not very good. Anybody? Yeah, great, yeah, so this is a BRAO, okay? BRAO, very similar to CRAO in terms of how they ask, you know, how, how they would ask questions for basically a, um, a stroke workup. <clears throat> Just remember, emboli from carotids, um, heart valves, it could be calcium or arteriosclerosis. Okay, very good. And this one, blood and thunder. CRBO. CRBO, very good. Um, very good, CRBO. Um, you know, just clinically, you know, the non-ischemic forms versus the ischemic forms. So you can find that through FA. That doesn't get asked anymore as well, okay? Um, but if there's a neovascularization, you do PRP. Very good. This one. BRBO, good. Blood and thunder kind of sectorally. Very similar. Okay, very good. Very good. Um, Oh, one of the questions that get asked for BRBO is kind of what quadrant's the most common, you know, so it's super temporally, okay? 
a lot of things to remember, I know. Okay, what is this? So cotton wool spots, not much hemorrhage. What do you think about? HIV. HIV is a good differential for sure. Hyperten this is hypertensive retinopathy, okay? So when you see more cotton wool spots than blood, think about hypertensive retinopathy. So just check for high, um, blood pressure. You can have copper or silver wiring. Um, good. Macular star, let's talk about macular star. Why is it a macular scar when there's exudation? Why is it that pattern? Where, where's the um, swelling? What part of the retina? Henle's layer, okay? And that's why it's kind of a, in a petaloid configuration. Okay? Um, other things that you can see in pictures are, I, I don't have pictures for this, sometimes in hypertensive uh, retinopathy are Elschnick spots or secret streaks. So sometimes they will show you kind of a peripheral picture with these like kind of dots. Um, and you know, that could be hypertensive. And you know, you'll just check for blood pressure. What is this? Perfect, okay, perfect, perfect. So non for diabetic retinopathy, a lot to know about here clinically. Um, so the most important things to talk about here are, um, do they have it here? Um, is a, a you know, kind of a definition of a severe non proliferative diabetic retinopathy, and that's the 4 2 1 rule four quadrants of dot blot hemorrhages, or two uh, quadrants of a venous beating, or one quadrants of Irma. That's the definition for a severe non proliferative diabetic retinopathy. Okay, very good. Sometimes they ask questions about the trials, about you know um, insulin uh, levels for di you know di type one or type two diabetics. So intensive control decreases the risk for even the prop, you know, end organ damage as well. Okay, what is this? Okay, so this is NVD from diabetes. Would you do PRP on this on this person? Mm -hmm. Would you do PRP on this person? Yes, why? Because what? Partly. Uh, because I think, you know, the disc diameter of uh, the uh, neovascular jet may be about one half disc diameter. Okay, so if it's greater than that, you can, you know, that's the, so the definition of high risk PDR is important to know. Um, if it's, uh, you know, any NVD with vitreous hemorrhage, you do PRP. If it's a small NVD, you don't necessarily need to do PRP. If it's, you know, uh, um, about half this diameter or so, even without vitreous hemorrhage, you can do PRP. Um, NVE with, uh, with, um, uh, with vitreous hemorrhage, you do PRP as well. So those are the three definitions of, um, of high-risk PDR. There's also another set of definitions of PRP having, you know, three of the four. Do you guys remember all that? Okay, perfect. Um, very good. And the, that's just what I said. Neovascularization this greater than one third, you do PRP. Okay. If it's less than that, uh, it has to have vitreous hemorrhage. Okay. Okay. What is this? What is it? Yeah, with macular edema. So this is a clinically significant macular edema. These definitions, uh, we, you don't get, you know, fortunately I haven't seen a question like this in OCAPs or in the boards anymore asking for definitions of CSME. This is the old definition of when to do focal um, or grid laser, okay? Um, but, you know, in here you can see that, well, it's hard to see, uh, but this is, uh, there's thickening of the retina within 500 microns of the fovea, okay, with associated exudation, and that's the definition of clinically significant macular edema. So this person, back in the days, definitely would um, require to do focal. Nowadays, if we see DME, we would probably treat with anti-VEGF, okay. Um, so, but the definition of clinically significant macular edema are those three, okay? And just think about it as, you know, it focuses on thickening and not exudation. Thickening within 500 micrometers, uh, 500 uh, microns of the fovea. Retinal exudates within 500 microns of the fovea associated with adjacent thickening. And then retinal thickening more than one disc area in size within what this diameter of the center of the fovea. So uh, if they have that, then they would qualify for a focal laser, okay? All right, now it gets more fun. What is this? 
sickle cell. So what do you see up, up there? Salmon what is it? Salmon patch. Yeah, salmon patch. Why do you get a salmon patch? What's the mechanism? What is it? Mm -mm. So this is a kind of a, we think that the, um, sickle, uh, there's sickling and then there's arterial occlusion and that's why you get salmon patch that gets asked as well. It's not neovascularization. That's kind of the, what they trick you on. And then below here, what, what do you see in FA, kind of the buzzword? C-fan. What's the other thing that can cause C-fan, or the part of the differential that they like to trick you as well? No, not coats. Coats is mo mostly telangiectasias. Okay, that's the buzzword. Uh, eels? Eels could be, but there's one that, you know, they're thinking. Sarcoid. Okay, sarcoid can cause like a C-fan neovascularization. So they'll show you kind of weird stuff. You see C-fan, it's not really sickle cell. Other things about sickle that's kind of tested. So, uh, you know, so SS, you know, uh, uh, is the one that gets more systemic manifestations, but who actually gets more um, eye problems? Or S thou, okay, S C more than S thou. That's the other thing. Um, avoid avoid carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, especially for the ones with the high FEMA. You guys know that. Other things um, you see these. Um, I've seen pictures of these um, uh, as well, shown like kind of the um, what is it called? The oh yeah, the sunburst spots. Okay, kind of that black thing. Uh, that's also. Uh, highly testable and uh, for OCAPs. Um, very good. Good, okay. All right, this one, what is this? Whose group is it? Okay. RAM, perfect, okay. So those of you not sure where the RAM is, it's uh, in this area right here. Um, somewhere here. Usually it's kind of in a vessel, you see kind of hemorrhage around it, you know. You don't really sometimes see the uh, aneurysm and then kind of, they'll show you some exudates. For RAM, you know, um, yeah, it's a, it's, uh, they like to test this because you know, the, the, uh, it can have um, uh, hemorrhages. It's one of the things that can cause hemorrhages in all layers of the retina, pre-retinal, intra-retinal, sub-retinal, et cetera, okay. And then what is it associated? What do you need to check on a patient if you see somebody like this? Hypertension, Hypertension. okay. So that's the, that's the answer, hypertension. Very good. And this one. This one's not easy. Anybody? History. Of radiation. <laughs> this is radiation retinopathy, okay? So, okay. radiation retinopathy. Um, so, brachytherapy, etc. We, ju we just have a, we just have a lot of uh, pictures to go, right? You know, like, let's just all we'll just kind of go forward. Um, so, you know, uh, radiation retinopathy can mimic a lot of different things. You treat it just like a diabetic retinopathy, basically, okay. Uh, doses, uh, it never asked the question, I've never seen a question asking kind of a, um, you know, how much radiation it causes. But for your information, 30, 35 grays. Um, but actually, when you start getting to 50 grays, okay, that's when, you know, 50% of the patients um, get radiation retinopathy. Okay, so that's really the, you know, the threshold that I think about. Um, let's think, there was one more thing about, uh, um, it's not really six months to one year, that's what I was uh, thinking. It's more like a little bit longer than that, about 18 months before it presents. Good. This one, so the other eye is normal, the other eye is not. Oh, Very good, yeah, usually mid-peripheral hemorrhages. Um, You've seen a lot of this, hopefully, in call by now. OIA, OIS. So carotid evaluation. Five-year mortality is 40 to 50%, so pretty high. This one. These gets, you know, the next couple of slides are a bit difficult. It looks like it could be like. 
hypertensive right now. Yeah, it could be, right? Yeah. So, this is leukemic retinopathy. Okay. Leukemic retinopathy. What they test in leukemic retinopathy is somebody with kind of decreased vision. You see this and you have an APD. What do you need to do? Well, they have an APD. Well, like for leukemic. You, you, get, a, you get imaging. You know, and then what do you do with that? Uh, they need, like, yeah, emergent radiation. That's the answer. Um, yeah, that's usually that's that's the answer. You get a CBC, and if there's anything you, you give to radiation. All right, this one. Perfect. Yeah, ROP. Um, and what stage is this? Three. Yeah, three. Yeah, I think it's a different patient, but uh, yeah, I. So uh, you know, ask a lot about ROP questions. You know, it's it's important to know the stages of ROP. Stage one, you have the line. Stage two, it's kind of a um, a little bit more volume of the ridge. Stage three has a, a vascular proliferation um, uh, to the vitreous. Stage four has a, a a peripheral retinal detachment. Stage five is a total retinal detachment. You know, there's four A and four B. Um, they don't ask about threshold disease, you know, it, you should know that, you know, things always change every year, but I've never seen any questions of when to treat just because it's always, I think it's always just kind of a moving target, you know, it's, it's hard to test. Um, but the things I do see is, you know, when to screen for, um, for um, ROP, so um, the gestation, what, how many weeks? Less than 30, yeah, sometimes they put 32, but it's less than 30. Uh, and then in terms of weight, less than 1,500. Um, and then, or, or if they have, um, if they've been in the ICU, if they've been septic, kind of just been sick, you know, maybe a little bit earlier. Um, <clears throat> so those are the questions for ROP. Uh, we don't typically do cryo, typically just laser right now, and anti, you know, possible anti-VEGF is really posterior. That's what you need to know for ROP. Very good. There's a lot in the BCSC about kind of the follow-up plan, two weeks, one week. I've never seen any questions of that in the, um, in the several years. This one, this one looks like RAM as well, right? So, but... Anything else that causes a lot of exudation? Coats, perfect, coats. All right, coats disease. Um, so coats disease this is one of the telangiectasias. So think about that for telangiectasia. MACTEL is kind of another telangiectatic disease. This is the male un unilateral uh, disease. There's no genetic mutation for coats, so this is spontaneous. Um, Oh, another uh, testable thing is uh, the bimodal age distribution. So, you know, there, this is the disease that has two um, age distribution. I've seen that in questions. And, and I think that's it, you know, can cause a lot of a, um, uh, a kind of a serious detachment. Okay, this one. This one they love to test. What is this? Rachel's team. There's stuff temporal to the fovea. What is it? Group two, MACTEL, perfect. So this is MACTEL, okay? Um, so it can still be called juxtafovial telangiectasia. And the BCSC, you know, even this year, they still kind of group it into three, uh, type one, type two, type three. Type two is MACTEL, you know, Bernstein's research. Um, but usually when you see, if you look at a fovea and you just see pigment changes temporal to the fovea, okay, um, and nothing else uh, around it, then it's a MACTEL. Other things that, you know, uh, they ask for MACTEL is, you know, there's temporal leakage, there's like these um, atrophic looking cysts temporal to the fovea. Um, Anti-VEGF does not respond very well to these patients. Those are the questions that get, get asked, okay. Oh, and it's association with diabetes. So it's associated with diabetes. I think that still gets asked. 
Okay, this one, what is this? CSCR. CSCR, okay. So this is the classic uh, smokestack um, pattern um, of uh, leakage, uh, which doesn't really show um, very often. The other one is the expansile dots. Um, associations with stress, steroid use, um, type A personality, um, uh, or you know some of the you know sometimes antipsychotic medications is another one that uh, is associated with, and you just observe this, okay? They may ask questions about kind of treatment, and the treatment is PDT, okay, or laser. Okay, what is this? Optic pit, okay. Um, optic pit. What associations do you guys think about for optic pit? Retinal detachment. Retinal detachment, so fluid can get in the optic pit and can uh, uh, detach the macula, so that's, uh, that's the important thing um, for optic pit. What else? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Can't think of anything else. <laughs> well, Bear knows we have another one. So, but um, yeah, papillo renal syndrome. Okay, you know that sometimes they get get asked as well with a Pax two mutation. That's another thing for optic pit. Okay, this one. It's a good one. Okay, myelinated uh, retinal nerve fiber layer. What are the associations of myelinated retinal nerve fiber? Hyperopia, myopia? Myopia, what else? I think about amblyopia as well. Okay, that's the other thing that they like to ask is amblyopia. Um, usually unilateral. Um, usually is, not, you know, not uh, visually significant, but again, you know, you, you would see that in amblyopia. Um, very good. Okay, so myelination anterior to the lamina cribrosa. Okay, this one, what is this? Drusen. Yeah, Drusen. So this is ma macular degeneration. <laughs> okay, good, good. Um, you know, for macular degeneration, uh, they, they like to ask kind of the associations, you know, what are the risk factors for, uh, so smoking, hypertension, family history. How about male or female? Female, female. okay, good. Um, I'm trying to think, oh, the ARIDS vitamins, you know, that's kind of another high yield topic of, you know, what they ask. So just knowing it's vitamin C, vitamin E, uh, lutein, Z, xanthine, and zinc, okay, are in the ARIDS 2 formulation. Um, they don't ask about, but you know, the ARIDS one had beta carotene increases lung cancer. That's why we don't uh, use it anymore. Um, they don't ask about the old laser questions anymore for macular degeneration, mostly the anti-VEGF now. Um, <clears throat> and then the CNV, the three different types of CNV, classic or type one, type two, and type three. Okay, so good. This one is a bit hard, um, but what is this? Mm -hmm. Toxo or OHS. Yeah, this is myopic degeneration, okay. So, <laughs> that's why I said it's hard. I gave you, nice. I gave you guys that. But yeah, that's what I thought actually when I first saw it is probably you know, kind of toxo. Um, uh, you know, you see peripapillary uh, atrophy. You see kind of, you know, just um, kind of a thinned, uh, uh, thinned uh, retina overall. So high myopia. Um, but, you know, so uh, I look back in the BCSC and uh, the definition of pathologic myopia is uh, greater than uh, minus six diopters or greater than 26.5 millimeters of axial length. That's, I think, typically lower than what I think uh, most people kind of uh, uh, think about pathologic uh, myopia. Um, <clears throat> okay. Oh, and, and uh, since we're talking about optics, okay, just throw in a couple of optics questions as well. <laughs> so, uh, you know, one thing that they ask is, um, you know, what kind of lens do you use to do like PRP? Uh, 
So high, high plus lens or or minus lens, or like a high plus plate of concave or or minus. Minus video. Huh. A plus lens with an angle. Yeah. Okay. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the question they ask. It's, so it's a plus lens. So how do I remember it? You have a 90 diopter lens, right? It's plus 90, okay? It's inverted, okay? And when you go to do a PRP, it's also inverted. So I think about a high plus lens, okay? You get a wider view of things, okay? So makes stuff bigger, right? Like uh, it's magnified things. as well. Since you asked that, how magnified is the uh, main, mainster wide field? Yeah, two. How about, no, not the wide field, but the PRP is two. How about the mainster wide field? It's 1.5. That's not tested in the OCAPs. Um, <laughs> but it's a plus, plus lens, okay? So this is important because, you know, when do you do a you know, minus lens? You know, when do you need a... Uh, focal. Like focal, right? You need a direct, highly magnified view. We don't do that as much anymore, even in residency, okay? But that's how I think about it. You use a 90 diopter, it's a high plus lens. You use that for PRP as well, okay? Um, so that's kind of an optics thing. Good. All right, this one. Good. What's your mnemonic? Good. What are they? Paget disease of what? The bone. Sometimes they put breast. Okay, so Paget disease of the bone. Okay, what else? Ehlers Danlos. What else? Good. What else? Very good. What else? There's one in that mnemonic that gets tested as well. Beta thalassemia, okay? That's not in the mnemonic, so, but that gets tested as well. So, adjoid streaks, these are breaks in where? Brooks. Brooks, okay, very good, Brooks. And you were about choroidal neovascularization. Very good, good guys. Um, One thing for pseudoexanthoma elasticum, you know, that sometimes a case gets presented with a GI bleed, okay? So think about uh, uh, a pseudoexanthoma when a GI bleed. I've definitely seen that a lot. The other thing for like GI stuff that you think about is uh, von hippel lindau okay, when I think about that. Um, okay, that's it, very good. Keep going. What is this? Macular hole, very good. Um, and that white thing is all ERM, okay, so macular hole. Um, so the stages of macular hole are important. Um, you don't do surgery for stage one because they do spontaneous resolution. Uh, stage two is already a full thickness hole, so through the RPE basically, but it's still small. Stage three is a little bit bigger, and stage four has a, you know, um, a larger already. Uh, okay, and this one. Come on, guys, we still have a lot to go. Yeah. ERM, very good. ERM, they don't ask a lot of questions for this, for ERM, um, um, but clinically, when it becomes 2040 or so, metamorphopsia, then you can consider surgery. Okay, this one. What is this? Okay, or just a choroidal detachment, okay? Choroidal detachment. Um, so you can see kind of a, you know, it looks like the retina is uh, detached, but it just looks like, you know, it doesn't have those corrugations, it looks thicker, you know, so that's kind of a choroid uh, detachment. And ultrasound, you can see it as well, there's kind of a space, so choroids detached. Um, so core detachment, you know, the important point to think about um, is a treatment. So you kind of do cycloplegic for choroidal detachment, okay? Um, the other thing is choroidal detachment. If it's a choroidal effusion versus a supracroidal um, hemorrhage, what's the IOP? Which is which? Supracroidal hemorrhage is high. Very high, okay, so it's painful, it's high, and a, a choroidal effusion is gonna be low, okay? Um, but the treatment is, uh, um, cycloplegics. When they become kissing, then you do surgery. Um, but if not, then you just kind of watch it. You can, you know, um, you can drain as well if it's the really large. Good. I guess it's written there already. Um, 
yeah, many of these are important clinically, but you know, for the old caps doesn't get asked. That's why I just skip skip over. Okay, what is this? Yeah, vitreous hemorrhage, very good. So this is, you know, the uh, for vitreous hemorrhage, we've talked about this for kids already. Um, very good. This one. RP, very good. What are the differential diagnoses for RP, the ones that they can trick? What do you think about right away when you have? Sure, code rod. What it? You can, yeah, that's that, very good. Ducin for unilateral RP, you, can, you think about that. Syphilis is another mimicker. Azor is another mimicker, okay? These are the ones that get asked, you know, kind of trick you in the old caps of what it is. Um, but RP, and which one is RP is the worst? X-linked, autosomal recessive, autosomal dominant. X-linked is the worst, okay. Um, and then autosomal recessive is also bad. Uh, autosomal dominant is the, you know, kind of easier. Um, <clears throat> Oh, so associations for RP is very important, okay? So what are the associations, clinical findings in RP? Some of it listed here already. PSC. PSC, very good, that's one. What, is, what else? CME. CME, very good. You could have hearing loss. Optic disc what? Drusen. Drusen, very good, yeah, that's great. You do see, see that with optic disc, good. What else? Hearing loss. That's for Usher syndrome, okay? You can have that for Usher syndrome. Anything else? Vitreous cell. Okay, so you can get mistaken for um, uveitis. So vitreous cell. And there's one obscure other association for um, RP. Vasoproliferative tumors, okay, is associated with RP. That gets tested as well, okay? Um, you know, besides the waxy powder disc, attenuated vessels. Okay, but vasoproliferative tumor, optic disc drusen, very good. Those are the ones. Vasoproliferative tumor, yeah. When I think about vasoproliferative tumor, okay, I think about um, RP. I also think about ROP. ROP is again another um, association with it. Good. Um, we don't do vitamin A palmitate, okay? And that's, you know, that's, you know, that will never get asked. Um, uh, high yield topics as well are the syndromic forms of RP, okay? The hearing loss, uh, Brad already talked about uh, for Usher disease. Um, I, I'm just thinking, what else? Um, <clears throat> Current Sayer syndrome um, kind of has a salt and pepper retinopathy, okay? Heart block. Uh, is what you think about for Kern Sailor syndrome and CPEO. Those are the things that get tested. I haven't seen A beta lipoproteinemia being tested, um, but um, uh, basically it's a fat, you know, you can't digest fat soluble. So this is, it looks very, very similar to vitamin A deficiency. Okay. You know, other associations of uh, 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 RP. Um, is uh, the one with a polydactyly. What do you guys think about that gets tested as well? Bardet beetle, very good. So Bardet beetle, they'll, you know, they'll have a citrine. You have polydactyly, they get hypogonadism as well, intellectual disability. Okay, what is this? Croideremia. This is, I think in every OCAPS, I always see a picture of a uh, croideremia, okay? So just remember this. So croideremia, what's the uh, genetic um, uh, uh, transmission? X-linked, good, so mostly males, okay. Croideremia, what's the mutation? CHM. CHM, or what is it other called? What is it? Or, that's true. There's always one that they like to put. It's like geranol, geranol something, something, so. So, 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 but you remember the geranol, geranol esterase, it's a rapid escaporin, so they, 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 they love putting that, okay, for choroideremia, CHF mutation. Um, they put a chromosome in there, I can't remember what chromosome CHM is. 
Oh yeah, it's X. Yeah. Okay, okay never mind. Like, this is another one that they love to put. Okay, so you see this a lot as well. And I gave this. What? Ad gyrate atrophy. So gyrate atrophy, um, the, very confusing, right? So you know, ornithine levels are elevated, um, and oh, and then the treatment, the treatment. You give them supplements. B six. And retrograde arginine. So the, the the very very confusing. Okay. Um, I have a way to remember this, I forgot already. Autosomal recessive, okay. Um, gyrid atrophy, okay. And it's uh, ornithine aminotransferase, okay. So that's the defect. This one. Bullseye maculopathy, this is cone dystrophy, okay. Cone dystrophy. Um, What are the mutations for? Um, I, I, you know, it's really annoying, but uh, sometimes you just need to know a couple of the mutations because you know the more that you know. What are the mutations for? High, you know that. Uh, it, it's never the answer, but you always see it in the answer choices. <laughs> for con goosey two D or like the goosey genes, okay? Uh, <laughs> goosey, yeah, yeah, goosey two D. Okay, for con dystrophy. Okay, this this one. I know there's a lot of like really minute points that I've seen a lot. So, so this is what is this, my guys? Irvine gaps. No. <laughs> no. So pisiform flex. Oh, star guards. Star guards, right? Star guards. So is it leaking or staining? That's why it's star guards and not, or you know, not like CME. Okay. Okay, what's the mutation? ABCA4. ABCA4, okay. What's the other mutations? <laughs> I don't know. Excuse me? PRPH2. PRPH2, very good. And ELOVL4. Okay, PRPH2. What else do you think about PRPH2? These are tested. I've seen these. PRPH2. Nope. Pattern dystrophy which is a bigger term, and it's really adult vitelliform macular dystrophy, okay, PRPH2, okay? Star guard disease, uh, so an FA, dark choroid, that's the uh, buzzword for FA. Um, this is autosomal dominant, okay? Uh, fundus, don't worry about this, this is not tested anymore. Um, very good. Okay, this one. Best disease, what's the mutation? Bestrophin. Or VMD1, yes. So that's, you know, you never see best one in the test, unfortunately. You see v <laughs> VMD1. Uh, um, so, and, you know, what's abnormal in the test? Or what do you get? EOG. And what's the Arden ratio? Less, less than what is abnormal? 1.6, okay, 1.6 is abnormal, okay, for, for the Arden ratio, okay. Um, and this is autosomal dominant, okay? All right, very good. This one. I know, very good, thanks for remembering that, yeah. I put this in. This is tested as well. I'll, I'll be punctatus, okay. So Flavia maculatus is a, an old term for star guards. We know it's star guards anymore. So if you forget that term, that's probably kosher. So this is a fundus albipunctatus, okay. What's the mutation? You see that? Yeah, awesome, RDH5 or, what is it called? I know, there's a lot, right? I actually forgot, so there's another, there's a name for RDH5. Uh, good, very good, guys. Guys are ready. Um, <laughs> so uh, this is one of the congenital night blindness that has an abnormal fundus. Okay, that's what you need to know about this um, CSNV. So it's non-progressive. 
this one. This one I haven't seen this, uh, you know, this is highly testable, but I haven't actually seen this on the test. Huh? Oh, Gucci disease, very good. So which one is dark adapted and which one's light and has light? That one's light? That one's dark, okay. So when you dark adapt these patients, their fullness becomes normal. What are you pointing to the, at? To the left, left and right. Oh, I'm sorry, right? This, this one is dark adapted, okay. So when you look at a patient, they have um, kind of a darkerish picture and when you dark adapt it for like several hours like 10 hours or something they become normal so so that's a gucci disease that's um uh, and i've seen this you know term like uh, even in the test the uh, mitsuo nakamura something phenomenon okay um you know sometimes they'll put those things to trick you so a oh, gucci disease uh very good This one, very good. So this is albinism, okay? Albinism, a lot of things that they like to test on albinism. So uh, foveal hypoplasia is one. You see foveal hypoplasia, that's uh, albinism. Um, the tyrosinase positive, tyrosinase negative, that's kind of the older term for it. It's really the oculocutaneous versus oculo, um, um, uh, just the ocular forms of albinism. Uh, the, but the biggest thing for albinism is you need to think about Chediak-Higashi syndrome and um, uh, hermansky pudlock So Chediak-Higashi has neutropenia. They get a lot of uh, infections and uh, hermansky pudlock the P's, you know, platelets are prob problematic, Puerto Ricans and the other P's. Um, okay. I'm not going to go over this. Autosomal, uh, yeah, platelets, bleeding. Both of them bleed, but the other one gets neutropenic. So, okay, what is this? This is hard. So these are the kind of the differential diagnosis for pigmentary retinopathies. This is phenothiazine toxicity, okay. What are the phenothiazines? Chlorpromazine and? Thioridazine, okay, the old antipsychotic medications. Let's see if they get bipolars. And this one, bullseye maculopathy. Tox, you know, these are medication toxicities. What is it? Hmm? Plaquenil or chloroquine. Okay, chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine. Um, I don't, you know, there's, uh, they never look at the numbers. I've never seen a question of, you know, how much, but that's highly testable. Okay, this one, this is hard. This is a differential diagnosis for crystalline retinopathy. So what are the, what are the crystalline retinopathies? Tamoxifen. Talc. Bieti, so this is Bieti, okay. <laughs> what else? Catazanthine, right? Like in um, sunblocks or um, tanning agents. Methoxyfluorine, the old kind of um, medication. So, um, crystalline, you know, you can have crystals for MACTEL, you know, that's another thing. Cystinosis is another one. So, for crystalline retinopathy. Okay, good. Bernstein has never seen this as well. So, this one. End of a dot. It's eight o'clock. I think we should stop. What is that? Solar retinopathy. Okay. Let me just see if there's any good ones. Oh, I was gonna go over the uh, this one. So what is this? Hemangioblastoma from von Hippel and Dow disease, chromosome three. Right. You get a lot of cysts in the GI, pancreas, kidneys, epididymis. Um, Hemangioblastomas in the brain. Um, I can go over maybe this on. This one, Port Weinstein, Sturge Weber syndrome. The important thing is glaucoma. Uh, when it's below 10, it's, you know, um, uh, angle dysgenesis this is the mechanism for glaucoma. After 10 years old, when older, it's episclerosis vetus um, uh, pressure. That's one that gets tested. Um, remember, the, when there's Ws, they are uh, spontaneous, okay? So the wilds, this one. 
good race most angiomatosis race most something angiomatosis uh, there's no cap intervening capillaries it doesn't leak this one good retinal astrocytoma from tuberous sclerosis the genes are tsc1 tsc2 chromosome 9 and chromosome 16 um, it's a bungal um, you know the it's a bungal adrofibromas uh, calcification um, uh, through ct And then you got choroidal hemangioma. So this one, important, is choroidal hemangioma. So just remembering you have with ultrasound, you know, so this is high reflectivity. Okay, so kind of close in here. Um, so high reflectivity, you think about choroidal hemangioma, lower is melanoma, okay, low to mid is melanoma. That's the biggest thing. Chirpy. This one. Melanocytoma, choroidal melanoma, these are METs. Neuroretinitis, oh, for neuroretinitis, um, what are the, you know, the, uh, there's two bugs, right? Bacillostoma something and ancillostoma. Those get tested. I think that's it, okay. I'll talk about the Retinal necrosis and FA next week. Uh, what do you guys want to review for FA next week? For yeah, I just want to have it more high yield uh, for for old caps. It's not wasting your time. So I'll think of something. Thanks, dude. Okay, thanks, guys.